On September the 8th, Jagex released a new feature called the Activity Advisor. This tool is now located on your minimap as a clickable scroll icon. This feature in the testing phase was, according to Jagex's own words, liked so much that they decided to push it into the live game as early as possible. The feature is a recommendation tool for quests a new player can partake in, helping you form a fluid journey with less confusion. So let's make a new account, try this feature out, and see if it's any good. Alright, help I am new is about to be created, set the name, let's complete the tutorial island, and then bond this character up. Oh my god, look at this absolute unit! So even though we're not a member yet, we can actually have a look at the difference between member and free to play already, and all of the things that the activity advisor recommends is quests, and I wanna see in what order it recommends you to do it in. So for all quests, this includes member, you can see that on the fishing contest, these are the quests it recommends. Temple of the Eye being the last one, as the rune crafting quest, we have rune mysteries, goblin diplomacy, cook's assistant, all of these are useful but not too good. I think uh, goblin diplomacy is the least useful one, it does give a good amount of quest points, but skill wise it is not great. Now let's go to free to play quests only literally just removed the fishing contest and temple of the eye but let's actually become a member and start doing a couple of these and see what changes and the bond carrier has arrived let's accept it and redeem it for 14 days of membership let's get into the questing on members worlds so here's what we're going to be doing i'm going to give this account four hours and for four hours i'm going to be doing everything the activity advisor recommends me to do if it's leveling fishing then i will level fishing if it is completing a specific quest that's what i'm going to be doing i'm going to start off by doing a rune mysteries and go down the list and anything that pops up at the top over any other quest i will do that first so let's go ahead and start the stopwatch and get on with the rune mysteries quest right now I do want to mention I'm not going to be giving this account a bunch of money to buy anything. I'm not going to be buying its stamina potion, so I will for example have to walk all the way to Varrock during this quest, because that is the new player experience, and new player normally would not get a bunch of money gifted to them, so this is how I'm going to be doing it. Alright, here we go, this is the completion of Rune Mysteries, and I am really curious to see what is going to happen with the list. Is it going to add another quest on the list, or just stay the same for a while? It uh, seems to have added a new quest. X marks the spot. Very interesting. But first we do Goblin Diplomacy. It did not change the order. So for the Goblin Diplomacy quest, you actually need a blue die and an orange die. And to make that, you need at least, I believe, 50 coins. So I do need to sell some stuff in Varrock first. Of course, it does not say this on the Activity Advisor, but I can't do the quest if I don't do that. So for the red dye, I have to get red berries, and I can pick that completely for free from the red berry bush just south of Varrock. I do have to world hop because you need three of them. Alright, I sold all the basic things that you get in the beginning of the game, as well as I just killed a random imp. And it seems to be quite a lot of money from those ashes. Let's collect. We now have 600 coins, and that is definitely enough to do what we need to do. Now, before you say you could have just done the stronghold of security and get 10,000 coins or at least like 5,000 coins completely for free and really quickly. Well, that is kind of the point of this video. I think the activity advisor is a brilliant thing to put into the game, but I would love to see other things than only quests because, for example, right now I did need all of these items for the goblin diplomacy, but it's not giving me any advice on how to get them, how to get the money for it, or how to build a stable account. So I would love in the future for them to put for example an extra tab here that would just say useful things to get in your account it could be agility levels because i am walking everywhere right now or just money from the stronghold of security stuff like that after a lot of walking finally we're going to be getting all the dice that we need let's make the last one a blue one and let's add the red and yellow die together to get the orange one and we can finally complete the quest. Goblin diplomacy completed, let's now probably do the cook's assistant, yes, and we now have Gertrude's cat popping up as well. Getting the egg, milking a cow for some bucket of milk, and lastly getting the flour from the bin. Pretty much the fastest quest in the whole game if you have all the ingredients done already, you just talk to the cook and you're done with the quest. It is now time for X marks the spot and I do need a spade for this, luckily there is a general store right here and it is only 3 coins I think, so let's just go ahead and buy it and complete the quest. Now if I could decide I would have done this quest probably first out of all the ones because you get an experience lamp and you can actually put this into agility. So let's do that and you go all the way from 1 to 4, it is not 
crazy, but it will help some with my run speed. You know, one good thing though about doing this quest at this point before Gertrude's Cat is that you do need a raw sardine for the Gertrude's Cat quest, and if you have money in your inventory, you can actually, when you're already here, buy a raw sardine from this guy, Garant, and uh, it should not be that expensive. Let's see, it is 10 coins, so let's buy one and complete Gertrude's Cat. So we just completed Gertrude's Cat, got 13 cooking and also the kitten, and we are basically one hour in, and the current progress we have made on this account is 13 cooking, 4 agility, 3 crafting, and then in terms of quest points, we have 9. Now, the next quest we're going to be doing is Pirate's Treasure. So one advice I can give you guys if you're a new player is that if you click over here and then you go all the way to the top right, there are grouping teleports and I've already picked Soul Wars, but if you want to get a free teleport every 30 minutes, you can go to any minigame in the entire world and this one is pretty close to Varrock which I need to get to. Also there are two different cooldowns on your home teleport to Lumbridge and the minigame teleport you can see that above my inventory right there so in 16 and a half minutes basically I can use the minigame teleport and in 29 minutes I can use the home teleports. Actually the first combat encounter I've been forced to do over these quests and it is a level 4 gardener but I have literally no combat stats so I could actually die here. Hey there we go I did not die and we are about to complete the pirate's treasure quest. Let's get the quest completed. Two quest points, one eyed Hector treasure. I think you get something from this. Let's go ahead and open it. Golden ring and an emerald, which actually on the GE together go for 300 and 210. Now the next quest is going to be Ernest the Chicken. And I am pretty sure there is like level 20 mobs you have to avoid or at least survive in this quest. But this is what it's recommending me to do. So hopefully it's going to be fine. Alright, that is the scary part of the quest. I only had to avoid this skeleton level 22. I actually remembered it being scarier, but only really I got two damage there. And of course, here we have Ernest the chicken completed as well. There Ernest is himself. We get four quest points and 300 coins. This could have been good to do early for money. Okay, so we finally ran into quite a speed bump right here. The next quest recommended is Daddy's Home, and for this you need... 10 planks, 14 nails at least, 5 bolts of cloth, 1 saw and 1 hammer. And that is like guaranteed at least 2,000-3,000 coins if you're going to be buying it from the GE. Of course you can pick up the planks from the wilderness or other various places, but uh, the bolts of cloth are like 1,000 each on the GE, and from the normal lumberyard store, they are like 250 each. So regardless, you need 1,250 coins. And then I just have to pick up the planks because that is really all the money that I have. Okay, so the way I'm going to be getting my planks is the graveyard in the wilderness. It is, of course, very risky. There are level 24 zombies and I don't really have that much food. But honestly, I don't really know any other way I could get these. They're 240 coins each and you need 10 of them. So picking them up here is like the only viable option if you do not have any money. Also sold the emerald and the gold ring that I got from the pirate's treasure to now have 1,700 coins, which I hope is going to be enough to buy everything I need. Oh my god, I read it wrong. There's 650 coins each from this store. Uh, I think the only possible way I can actually get that money now is, of course, either if I just sell the planks, collect more planks, or if I do the stronghold of security. But uh, yeah, that's uh, kind of unfortunate that you actually need to spend that much money this early on. Because I don't have an authenticator on this account and I actually can't do the stronghold of security, I just went ahead and picked up some more planks at Iron Medhelm at the same location and sold everything I could. And now I should be able to get all the things I need for the quest. Nearing the two hour mark and we just completed the uh, daddy's home quest and the good part about actually completing this quest is of course it is pretty good construction experience all the way to level 8 but you also get this Marlow's crate and if you open it you get a lot of things that you can actually use. For example the home teleport which is a house to Rimington which is a pretty good teleport close to Port Sarim. You get one Falador teleport which I will keep for future questing and probably the rest I will just sell for money. Let's go ahead and collect. I sold everything except the teleports and we now have 22,000 GP. A very good starter quest to do. I might consider buying some teleports with this money, but for now it might recommend me to actually do a quest where I do have to buy some items. So for now I'm going to be keeping this money. But the next quest is Romeo and Juliet. 
So I complete the Romeo and Juliet and I'm just getting all the things I need for Witch's Potion. And it's actually a very good move by Jax to put that after that is home because of this. Let's teleport to the house and that should be in Remington. So if we go outside, this is the location where you start the quest. Quite possibly even faster of a quest than the cook's assistant. Basically kill a rat and you're done with the quest if you have everything. And that is the first magic experience of the account as well. And we have 21 quest points at this point. But it is now time for Sheep Shearer. Maybe not the most incredible crafting experience making these balls of all, but at least you do get some crafting experience at the end. And the completion of that quest brings me all the way from 1 crafting up to 5. Not bad. There's no way I got all the way to 5. I only got 200 experience. I guess I already had some experience. I don't even remember from where. But it's time to complete the Teenage Horror Movie Quest Miscellaneous Mystery. Actually a very enjoyable quest. And we have the killer right here as well. Just look at this guy. This is a very good quest. I like how it's designed. It's very meme -y, but enjoyable. And it's not too long as well. So it shouldn't take all that long. Right this moment I am sending out a challenge. Anyone who can get this Bandos God Sword. I'm going to be giving you 100 million right now on the spot. I am personally unfortunately leaving without the Bandos God Sword, but we are leaving with at least 600 crafting, Uncut Ruby, Emerald, and Sapphire, which is not that bad of a reward. 9 crafting as well. A pretty good instinct and choice that I actually saved the money that I got from the Daddy's Home Quest to actually buy all of these items. Not sure why the white bead is so vastly more expensive than everything else, but I did actually also buy a Necklace of Passage, because we're doing Imp Catcher and that allows you to teleport right to the Wizard's Tower right here most people don't even know this item exists there are so many free to play quests in old school runescape where you basically just bring the items and you're done with the quest right away so you can speed this up by quite a lot if it would recommend you the items that you need to bring right away of course it doesn't do that in the activity advisor but there is a room light plugin for it that basically everyone uses for quests and the first amulet is achieved so I'm currently working on Enter the Abyss, and for that you need to teleport to the Rune Mine from the different mages. And there's actually a very nice thing about the Necklace of Passage. I needed it for the Wizard's Tower teleport for this quest, but on top of that, there are not really many good Ardoin teleports, and I need to get there, except for the Necklace of Passage. You can actually teleport to the Outpost, and you get right here, which is very close to Ardoin. Just have to run a bit. For that, we get a nice 1000 runecrafting experience. We are now 9 runecrafting, and the next quest is a bit spicy. Plague City, and I know for a fact this gives mining experience, and actually quite a lot. So I do think that's a good quest to recommend. And again, we do have the Necklace of Passage, because that is in Ardoin. I think over the course of my whole entire channel, I probably made this joke like three times, so this might be the fourth one, but uh, I just have to say he really has a fitting name. And on top of that, we did also hit the three hour mark just now, so we have one more hour to go, and the current state of the account is right here, you can see the stats, and in terms of quest points, we currently have 24. Oh, I actually missed the pop-up screen, but there we go, 15 mining, and that was like 2,400 mining experience. Definitely a good and fast starter quest. Dork's quest actually gives mining experience as well, but less, I think, so kind of maybe put that first, but doesn't really matter too much. So Dork's quest actually requires a couple of items, and we did actually hit 15 mining from that quest, and you do need iron ore, so you know what, instead of buying the things, I'm just going to get it myself. I feel like this is pretty legitimate for how new players would do it anyways. Adding on to the mining experience from Plague City, 1300 mining experience and access to his anvil, not sure how useful that is, but 18 mining. So we're now roughly 3 hours and what, 20 minutes into this video and we're actually getting the first quest that actually gives melee combat experience. After this one I will get 3000 attack experience and usually you know people do waterfall quest, get like 30 attack, 30 strength right off the bat. But no, 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 not this time. Activity advisor is not going to recommend that. But I do understand why. This is not meant to be a super efficient way of playing the game. It is just to show you what things you can do. And basically all of the quests it's recommended so far are extremely easy to do with basically no danger to them at all. The waterfall quest would be very dangerous for a new player where you can get one shot from the moss giants down in the, uh, the teleport thing with a pebble. So yeah, I definitely understand why they would not do that. So let's see what attack level we got from that. We got all the way to 16. That is definitely not bad. And on top of that, we got our new best in slot melee weapon, the Steel Claws. 
Yo, dude, <laughs> there is no way that actually happened. I was doing the dwarf cannon quest, which it recommended me to do, let's be honest, and I died. I was repairing the railings, but apparently you need food for that because I literally died. Well, luckily I had the necklace of passage. I could get here very quickly and now I have stew as well, so I should not die a second time. Oh, very interesting. They have started recommending me soon to do Recipe for Disaster Part 1. I do really like that because getting to Burrow's Gloves as soon as possible is usually even the efficient way of playing the game. But at the end of the day, we did make it out alive and we got 750 crafting experience and ability to use the Dwarf Multicannon. Which, of course, we cannot use at all at this point. 12 crafting. It is like 700k cash to actually get a cannon. So yeah, that's not going to be for a while. With only roughly 10 minutes left to go and we have Client of Current recommended to us now, I don't think we will be able to complete the quest. I will try and see how far we can get, but it is basically a walking simulator over the biggest continent in the entire game. So in a couple of seconds here we're reaching the 4 hour mark and after that of course I'm going to be stopping the timer, but we're like 90% done with this quest, so I'm just going to complete this one, count it in for the 4 hours as well, and then we're going to be doing a review of the uh, feature. And there we go, that's the final quest for this entire video, and I'm going to be putting both of these experience lamps into agility. This would have been a very good quest to start off with for the 1000 agility experience, but at least now we have 10 agility. Alright, so here we go, this is the 4 hour result of using the activity advisor. First off, we got to 8 combat level, we got 16 attack, 10 magic, 9 rune crafting, 8 construction, 10 agility, 12 crafting, 13 cooking and 18 mining. And the biggest thing, of course, is the quest points. We got 29 quest points, 17 quests completed. And basically all of the quests I completed is free to play quest. You can see that right there. And then after that, we did actually complete Client of Current, Death Plateau, Dwarf Cannon, and Gertrude's Cat. And let's see, is there anything else? Plague City. And after that, we completed Daddy's Home and Enter the Abyss mini quests. So what are my thoughts on the activity advisor? Well, as a player who plays this game a lot, I can say it's a very inefficient way of playing on a new account, but that is not the point of the activity advisor. It is to recommend people who are new or haven't played in a long time what they can actually do in the game. And I think the quests it recommended are actually easy, not dangerous at all, that's why it probably still has me on 10 HP. It's not really risky to do anything in these quests it's recommending, but it's actually a nice questing experience. I had fun, meanwhile, making this video, even as a seasoned player. But I do think, for the criticism, that they need to add another tab where they recommend other things to do that could speed up the overall account progression for players that isn't even super efficient, it's just more quality of life. For example, train agility. Go to this area, train agility before you do any of these quests, because Basically, half of the time, if not even more, of this video was just spent walking everywhere. It didn't even recommend me to buy teleports, it didn't recommend me to do the security, uh, stronghold security, basically nothing like that. And because it only recommends quests right now, it is not telling you either if you need any specific items. For example, that is home. I needed like 5,000 coins to be able to complete that quest. And if you haven't recommended any way of getting that, well, I think that's a flaw in the system, personally. So yeah, that is my feedback. Please add another tab with other ideas that you can do for the account. And I think it's going to be a great system. I really am looking forward to seeing how they improve this feature. But regardless, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to be keeping up to date with my uploads. And until next time, guys, take care.